Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a radical equation but a very 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 radical one. Why? Because it's an infinite radical. So it's infinitely radical equation. How about that? With complex numbers to make matters worse or better. So we have the square root of z minus the square root of z minus the square root of z so on and so forth it goes on forever right and that the whole thing is equal to i how can something that is infinite can equal a finite number is i finite is i real no it's complex it's imaginary but it's a constant right just like e it's just a different constant and e and i are related by the way and integers too you know there's the famous euler's identity e to the power i pi plus 1 equals 0, bringing together uh, very important concepts of mathematics, an irrational number, a transcendental number, an imaginary number, a rational number. I don't think there's any. Well, transcendental numbers are also ir irrational, but that's a different story. Anyways, so we're going to go ahead and try to solve for z. How do we solve for z in an equation like this? First of all, there is the question of convergence. Does this converge? Wait, well, I don't know. It looks like it does because the whole thing equals a constant, right? So it looks like it should because the expression under the radical is a variable, right? It's not a constant. If I had something like this, then we should probably worry about convergence because I is a constant. For example, does this converge? It does, right? You probably know that this is equal to 1. Or how about this one? You should probably know that this is equal to 2. Or how about this one? You probably know that this is equal to golden ratio, right? Is the, do you write it as phi or phi or something like that? Anyways, one of the Greek letters. But that's not what we have here. We have a variable. So we're basically looking for a particular z value for which this expression this infinite radical converges to i. Okay? Is that possible? Let's find out. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is square both sides. Why am I doing it? Because I want to get rid of the outer shell. I mean the radical. Let's square both sides. That's going to give us an interesting result. The outer square root is going to disappear, leaving us with z minus the square root of z minus the square root of z, minus, allow me to write a little bit so that we can see the pattern. Sometimes, if you don't see the pattern, keep expanding until you see the pattern, hopefully in a finite amount of time. What is i squared? You should know this. It's negative 1. Make sure you know it, right? Everything you may forget about complex numbers, but never ever forget i squared. All right? Great. What happened? When I squared both sides, the same thing showed up again. What is the same thing? Well, it is just the original expression. So this should equal i, right? Seriously? Is that i? Well, it's, it's the same thing as the original, and I can keep doing it. For example, if I isolate this expression, like put the z plus 1 on the left, and this on the right, right? And if I squared both sides one more time, I would get z plus 1 squared, which is z plus 1 squared. I, could, I guess I can leave it like that for now. And then we would get an outer shell again. And this one, as you know, is i, right? So we get another equation. z plus 1 squared is z minus i could go on forever but that's not the point because there's an easier way to do it but before I show you that let me show you what Wolfram Alpha provides for this problem can you guess what the answer is gonna look like well Wolfram Alpha does not even understand my query is my query bad I don't think so I just typed the same equation the original if there's a better way to do it I mean I'm mean, just let us know you could even share a Wolfram Alpha link. Did you know that? If you calculate something and then you want to share with 
the audience, go ahead and do so. Anyways, Wolfram Alpha doesn't understand it, but we understand it because we are smarter than Wolfram Alpha. It's just a language model, right? It's just a, I don't want to say kind of like a, you know, dumb <laughs> AI, but, you know, it's a language model. Anyways, let's just go ahead and call this I again. And do you, do you need to square both sides? Not really. You don't. You know why? Because this expression contains itself. Let me show you. I'm going to do one more iteration. Okay. And now this is equal to I. And guess what? This is the same thing. Okay. So the square root of z minus i equals i. Is there a solution to this equation? Let's find out. To be able to solve this equation, I'm going to square both sides. Make sense? And then this will give me z minus i equals i squared, which is negative 1. And then I will add i to both sides. And that will give me negative 1 plus i. Great. Now, let's think about it. Does this really satisfy the original equation? Well, the original, not the original original, but the somewhat original, okay? The second original, which is, I think, this one, right? So we have square root of z minus i equals i. And if z is equal to this, let's plug it in, negative 1 plus i minus i, square root of that, and I'm hoping to get i from here, square root of negative 1. Now, the square root of negative 1 can be questioned because complex numbers have two square roots, but I use the square root symbol, so we're going to go with the principal square root. What does that mean? It means it's going to be on the right, right, semi-plane. Oh, is, is that a half plane or semi-plane? Yeah, I think it's a half plane. The right half plane on the coordinate plane. Here. In other words, we want the real part of this number to be non-negative. It could be zero. It could be on the imaginary axis, and it actually is. So, the principal square root of negative one is just going to be i, and guess what? That satisfies the equation. Wow. That's interesting, right? We have the square root of z, which is negative 1 plus i, minus the square root of negative 1 plus i, minus the square root of negative 1 plus i. If you continue forever, is this going to converge to i, really? Is there a way to check? Those are good questions, right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.